AMD Epic 4004 Zen 4 AM5 CPUs have been pictured. Intel has issued their first statement in response to 13th and 14th generation stability issues. A Radeon RX 6600 LE graphics card has been released in China. And lastly, AMD Ryzen 1950 Trix Halo specs has been leaked. So in the last video, I made an information about the Epic 4004 CPUs, and there was a leak about it coming from a leaker Hong Yan Fu, and he basically leaked that information with saying that Epic 4004 CPUs will be launching in AM5 platform and yeah that's an epic series of processor launching on AM5 platform sounds quite weird but now we have more information and also basically the pictures of how it looks like so in the triple forum we get to see this here which is clearly you can tell it says AMD epic however it already has been priced which is weird already pricing this uh, CPUs in the triple forum like that's that's quite interesting see that so they're pricing all of them for two thousand dollars two thousand dollars for this is quite expensive but then again it's an epic processor for am5 platform so the price isn't that much higher you know compared to other epic processors but yeah all these uh basically all these processors are probably the same specs because obviously they're pricing the same thing but they do have different code names which is you can, you can see here 436 for p we have 458 for px 433 434 for p 424 for p and then you know so on so there are some different code names here and there so that's not really important but yeah the pricing is similar i don't know which particular model is this one is not sure but i am sure is that this is coming with 3d v cache basically so one correction from my previous video was that there won't be two variants non x3d or x3d there will be only one variant which is x3d variant so these epic processors will be coming with the x3d included and obviously these are going to be for the data center type of system but still coming with the am5 platform which is kind of crazy and next up we have intel has basically confirmed that they have verified that issue with coming with the core i9 stability and yeah they are still working on it and they acknowledge that there is a problem so it's not like intel is completely ditching this uh theory here the stability is quite terrible at this time around because you know it's going down to the i7 tier level of performance is not gonna be like acceptable right so eagles have reported this and basically intel has acknowledged this issue which they say is that intel has observed this issue maybe related to our out of specification operating conditions resulting in sustained high voltage and frequency so basically they're saying is that as these processors are running out of spec i don't know what they even mean by out of spec because you know you're giving the capability of overclocking the processors but then you're also saying that when you overclock too high it's gonna be terrible because it's not gonna be sustained properly so that's kind of weird but then again let's look into it so they say that while the root cause has not been identified yet so that is kind of alarming because they haven't been able to identify the root cause but yeah the basically the majority of this issue is coming from the unlocked or over clock capable motherboard so if you have an intel processor that can overclock which is obviously 30 and 40 generation then it's better to not overclock because you know stability right so they have also witnessed one particular information which is intel has observed 600 and 700 series chipset boards often set bios defaults to disable thermal and power delivery safeguards that is bad that is actually bad because you know when you're disabling the thermal and power delivery it's gonna go skyrocket in terms of you know thermal heat so it's not gonna down clock or or basically throttle for that reason it's gonna be causing some serious stability issue this is clear so these are the problems that we get to see here which is disabling current excursion protection which is a cep enabling the icc max unlimited bit disabling thermal velocity boost or enhanced thermal velocity boost additional settings which may increase the risk of system instability disabling c states using windows ultimate performance mode increasing pl1 and pl2 beyond the intel recommended limits so these are the problems we are facing currently with these processors so the recommendation from intel currently is that intel is strongly recommending customers default bios settings should ensure operation within intel's recommended settings and in the in addition intel strongly recommends motherboard manufacturers to implement warnings for end users alerting them to any unlocked or overclocking feature usage so again if you're using an intel processor it's better to not overclock because if you're you know doing so it is gonna be terrible for your processor and for your whole system basically so for now intel will be publishing a public statement regarding to this issue around may 2024 so we'll see about that next up we have something int 
interesting here ONDA has published this particular GPU which is the RX 6600LE ages 8 gigs so again LE doesn't really make sense it hasn't been you know in the specs list but I guess there's a down clocked process uh, GPU here so that's quite interesting let's see it in the specs however the looks of this GPU looks good though so ONDA is going for this white look here a pretty minimalistic look I have to say pretty decent looking card just the problem is that it's a 6600 so you know one generation older not a big deal i i guess pricing obviously that would be the main factor here because you know some people might even go for this you know budget build so that's it is, is it is a good choice or maybe even for the itx builds because that looks this card looks good but as for the clocks here we can see that core frequency we're looking at 2495 and the flow of processing unit which is or the streaming processors i should say is a 1792 so again a down clock because it's that rx 6600 le here of course the g6 memory with 8 gigs of capacity and of course 128 bit bus again same these are some weird naming they're going for demonstration frequency okay interesting 14 gbps and yeah the, the other specs remain the same yeah this particular card is just a weird launch only in the, available in china so you know i'm not gonna be too excited about it but still this particular card looks good though however it's on 6600 and including le so a bit down clocked interesting and lastly aim this massive ryzen 1950 strix halo and strix apus these are pretty exciting ones because this these apus are gonna be massive and what i mean by massive is when you see the specs you're gonna be mind blown it's already crazy so right over here in this particular forum in hkepc we get to see this particular information here and it says aim this strix points halo apu with 40 cus rdna 3.5 gpus exactly 40 cus that's apus holding for reference i'm gonna be showing you the playstation 5 which is as you can clearly see is the amd rdna 2 with 36 cpus or cus and not only that as rdna 3.5 not rdna 2 so obviously in architecture it's completely different but still for reference playstation 5 has 36 cus but this particular apu will have 40 cus so this is basically capable of running any particular game or playstation games obviously playstation games they really support pc games because you know they're exclusive but still when you give a comparison there it is at this C apu is capable of that so yeah, right over here we get to see the specs here so we will zoom into that and yeah basically the strix and the strix halo both of them has been leaked so first of all let's look into the strix so 12 cores 24 threads zen 5 cpu here we can clearly tell and the l2 cache will be 12 megabytes and l3 will be 24 megabytes coming with 8 times wgp meaning that it will be 16 cus this particular one will be 16 cus and rdna3 rdna3.5 so obviously rdna3.5 basically refers to rdna3 architecture but that 0.5 referring to the rdna4 level of ray tracing cores that uh, that is my understanding so yeah so better ray tracing cores but same as the rdna3 in terms of rasterization performance which is good enough and again if you look into the strix halo which is going to be a 16 core 32 threads processor seems like they're not really going going for that big dot little design they're staying with the traditional design because you know 16 core 32 threads is the traditional design of the uh the ryzen 9 series so yeah basically that kind of makes sense and then the l2 cache will be one megabytes again one megabytes per core per core meaning there will be multiple cores how many that doesn't really disclose here so we'll have to just speculate and l3 cache here is just 32 megabytes per ccd my guess would be there will be two ccds or even three but my the better guess would be two of them so 32 times two or there could be three ccds who knows but there's a high possibility it's going to be 96 megabytes of you know l3 cache so that's it as a high possibility because you know it's an infinity cache so that kind of makes sense so 32 megabytes per ccd unified so we'll see about that how that looks and yeah 20 wgp meaning that it's going to be 40 cus as one wgp meaning two cus so yeah 20 times two 40 cus will be found in strix halo and again rdna 3.5 so that is quite interesting don't know what this is this particular 32 megabyte is about i'm not sure maybe this particular one is for the gpu the r32 megabytes of l l3 cache or even infinity cache that is a high possibility this this particular 32 megabytes is the infinity cache for this uh igpu here so that's my guess but then again we don't really sure, know for sure so yeah anyways and these are probably also supporting ai because you know it also says ai e2 plus so i'm guessing that would be the case because you know it, it the performance here is 50 tops and for the strix halo is up to 60 tops so yeah these are also ai capable so yeah these information looks pretty solid and strix halo by default becomes a ps5 level of contender in pc which is crazy without without a particular discrete gpu if you have a 
a C APU like this, you don't really need a particular GPU. So that's quite interesting and exciting at the same time. This is the, probably the future of APUs. Am I right? So what do you think about these APUs here? Do you, gonna, do you think there's going to be you know good enough without the discrete GPU? Obviously, that the thought of having no GPU in a system like this, it's, I guess, kind of makes it fair because 40 CUs for an APU is crazy.